Hey lovelies, it's MLP with Lovely Lulu Designs, and in this video, I will show you how to make this Bleeding Heart watercolor alcohol ink tumbler. For this project, I decided to use the background as my spin on a Valentine's Day tumbler and use the saying, I hate everyone but you with an anatomical heart. However, some other ideas that could be really cool for this style would be a medical professional themed tumbler or even a true crime themed tumbler. As always, I will link the materials I use to create this tumbler, including the digital image in the description section of this video. With that out of the way, let's get started. For today's tumbler, I'm going to be starting off with a 20 ounce skinny uh, stainless steel tumbler that has been properly prepped, which basically means it has been sanded, cleaned with Dawn dish soap, and then I used a white primer in order to prep my, my surface. Um, I like to use a primer when I'm working with inks because I do prefer the matte finish. However, if you would prefer to use a white spray paint, that would be fine as well, as long as you are using one that has a built-in primer um, too. So the reason why I'm going with white is because um, these are translucent, so they will pick up the color in from behind it. So to get um, a nice, bright, true color to my inks, I want to start with a white base on this. And um, as I've mentioned before, I do purchase my tumblers direct from manufacturer. However, there are a number of different Canadian companies where you can purchase uh, tumblers. So if you are looking for Canadian suppliers, there are quite a few. One that I have purchased them from before and I know does have very good quality is DAHT Merchandise. So I will be linking her shop in the description section as well. Um, so I'm going to be using for colorant the Bria Reese Crimson Alcohol Ink. This is new to M and Cat Glitter Factory. She's going Going to be bringing in the entire Bria Reese alcohol ink line which is really exciting. So today I'm going to be using crimson which is a very nice dark red. I am going to be using a paintbrush to paint my uh, veins onto my tumbler. So I'm just using one here that has um, is kind of narrow. It has a bit of a, a tip on it. Not too um, not too pointy. The one I usually use is a lot pointier than this but we're going to give this one a try. I can't find my standard one right now. I also have a piece of paper towel for dipping off um, excess alcohol that I will be getting on my brush or excess um, ink that I get on my brush as well as a dish to put in my alcohol. So I'm going to be using isopropyl alcohol 99%. I'm just going to put a small amount in a dish or a container. Uh, this makes it easier for me to dip and it does not contaminate what's left in here. And I also have a piece of parchment paper, just a uh, warning for parchment paper, you want to make sure that your paper is laying down flat. If it um, kind of curls, what's going to end up happening is it's going to kind of um, move your alcohol ink all over the place because it's not sticky. It's just kind of going to potentially make a big mess on you. Speaking of messes, when I am working with inks, I do like to glove up. Even though I'm going to be using a brush when I'm applying it, I, I don't know if I'm messier than most people, but it has a way to get onto my skin and um, alcohol ink does stain skin. So that's not the greatest. So I like to glove up to protect my skin. So I'm going to start off by just putting a small amount of the Crimson Bria Reese alcohol ink onto my piece of parchment paper. I've got my um, brush here in hand and I've got my tumbler. I'm going to be sort of changing uh, how I'm holding my tumbler through this process in order to more easily change the direction of my veins. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dip it into the alcohol. I'm going to just kind of clean off uh, or sort of scrape off sort of some of that excess and I am going to dip it into my color. And what I want to start off by doing is I want to just start off by drawing a vein. It doesn't really matter. You can kind of just pick and choose where you want to start from, how you want to do it, but the important part is that you are getting the colorant on there. So right now, as you can see, my vein is rather thick, but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to thin it out and I'm going to start uh, sort of thinning the rest of the color as well. So I've just dipped into the alcohol and I'm just going to come onto the side here and I'm just going to add that alcohol. And what you're gonna notice is that it starts sort of concentrating my alcohol into a thinner line, which is going to be one of the main veins. 
and I just keep adding alcohol to my brush as I need it. Okay, and this allowed me to just concentrate where the ink went to get that nice deeper line. Now I'm going to add some ink color on the other side. You want to make sure that you're filling in any white so you don't have any white left behind. And now I'm not going to add more color. I'm just going to work with my rubbing alcohol or sorry, my isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just going to kind of continue to define that vein while also spreading out the rest of the pigment. Okay. So you're going to notice that this is the same technique as that the watercolor effect. The difference is that we are using a more darker pigmented ink than most of the ones I see. The most of the ones I see tend to be um, a little bit more on the pastel or lighter color. And the other thing is that I'm not going to be using multiple colors. I'm just going to be using this one color, this sort of blood red. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side, just to kind of stretch out my color a little bit. So with these, you're not going to need a lot of color. You're going to be able to stretch your pigment quite a long way. Uh, the more color you add, obviously, the darker it's going to be. And if you're seeing these harsh lines, you literally just come in with your brush and some more alcohol, and you can erase them and pull them through blend them out into the rest. So now I'm going to want to add another vein and I'm going to sort of fill in between the veins kind of as I go. I want to kind of get my, my map first of, of the veins that I'm going to be adding to it. So as you can see, I, I did change the position of where I'm holding. Of where I'm holding it so I'm kind of holding it from the bottom now because it's easier for me to draw this way and I'm going to dip my brush in and now I'm going to start making this more of a vein so it's really going to be repeating the same process throughout the entire cup this can be a bit time consuming one of the things that I found that I did a lot at first was I filled in my sections, like my areas between very early on, and they ended up being too busy. So I kind of had to go in and erase a lot of the work that I'd spent a long time doing. So this time I'm going to try it a little bit different. I'm going to sort of outline my veins first and then go back in and kind of work with the inks to do my smaller veins and my smaller details um, after I've sort of established the the blueprint or the layout for how I'm going to be doing my larger veins. And this is this is really just how you want to do it. There's no rhyme or reason to this. You can make your veins looser. You can only have a few on your tumbler. You can add a whole bunch. Um, it's really personal preference, but I wanted to do a Valentine's Day cup, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. I'm, I tend to have a bit of a darker, um, like just sort of what I have. So the idea of blood red veins just was really appealing to me. I haven't seen it done before. It's not to say it hasn't been done. I just haven't seen it. Um, so I'm hoping it's something a little bit different to show you guys. So what I'll do is I will speed up part of this video and as I just sort of continue to color in the spaces between and when I come back to do some of the smaller details, um, I'll show you how I do that as well.
So I'm almost done. The nice thing about this is it is kind of time consuming. It does take a while to get all of your details in and to get the entire tumbler covered. Um, but one of the nice things is that you can put it down and walk away and come back to it because the alcohol inks, you know, just need to have some alcohol added to them to make them workable again. So I just have my last section here that I want to kind of fill in. So I thought I would show you guys um, basically how I do that. So I've got my, like I said, I just took a little bit of a break. Um, so I have my uh, alcohol here and I have my ink here. What I'm going to do is if I only want to add a little wee bit of the pigment onto the tumbler, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first dip my brush into the alcohol. Then I'll take a small dab onto the ink itself. So I'm already diluting it there. I maybe we'll do a couple dots onto my parchment paper and then I'll start adding my color in and just sort of coloring it in a little bit. Um, I want to have a little bit more than that. It's not quite enough. You know what? I'm going to have just a little bit more than that as well. There we go. That's all the color I'm going to need. I'm going to spread it out now on the rest of this section. So one of the things that you should know when you're doing this is that um, the, the point of your, of your brush is where you're going to leave the the darker line of your ink. So basically what I mean by that is when you add the alcohol to your to your brush and you are smoothing your brush on the side, you're going to be erasing lines with the side of your brush and creating them with the tip of your brush. It's where it's going to force the pigment to go. So I really only have if I'm trying to smooth something, the side of my brush to work with, no matter what, it's always going to be pushing off an edge, which is why you get those sort of watercolory streaks in here. Um, but that adds to the detail and the dimension of it. It's also though how I will often develop my smaller veins throughout where my larger veins are. And that's because it sort of happens naturally as you are working your inks and you're moving them around. So what I try to do is I try to find ones that I like that have naturally occurred and I just kind of work with them. Um, so I'll show you an example when one comes up uh, because I'm still just adding my color and spreading it out now. I haven't really been too focused on finding one. I am going to add a little bit more pigment because I did forget to outline this vein from the other side. So I just added a little bit more color and now I'm coming in with my alcohol and I'm just going to concentrate that color onto my more prominent vein. And now I can blend my colors the rest of the way. And then if from here you're finding that you still want to add more color, take color away, I'll show you how you can take color away as well. So if I have too much color here, what I would do is I would just take my brush and I would kind of scoop it on my brush and then I would just use my paper towel to get rid of that color. So if you've at some point put too much on, that's how you can remove it. And you don't want to leave any white, so you do want to try to fill. So I'm focusing around the edges where my veins are. Try to avoid getting the alcohol onto your glove or onto your hand if you're not wearing a glove, although I do recommend it. Um, because what ends up happening is if you were to rest your finger somewhere, it will ruin the artwork that you have already done. So just like a little public service announcement there for you. Okay, so right here I had a natural vein sort of start to come up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of focus around there. So I'm going to smooth some of the ink around that. And I'm going to allow that vein to take its shape. And I'm even going to follow it around a little bit. And I'm going to come around to the other direction and do the same thing. So 
smooth some of the lines that I don't want and force them into this vein that has naturally formed. So there we go for that section. Now we're going to kind of smooth out some of these areas in the top section. So again, I'm just sort of using the side of my brush to kind of smooth and pull the ink away and having the tip kind of force the coloring into the area that I want it to be. So I finished up all of my ink work. I did the bottom here and just to sort of, sort of tell you how I did it, what I did was I took one of the larger veins on this side and I connected it to this one here and then I filled it in and I did the same on um, coming sort of from the, the side out of it. So that way it kind of wrapped the design around the bottom of the tumbler as well. Um, after that, I needed to seal my uh, my inks before I could move on with anything else. Um, what I use for when I use inks, so you see me often using the Quick Coat, which is my favorite sealer. However, you cannot use this directly on um, your alcohol inks because what it will do is it will, just like the alcohol did, it will reactivate it, it will start smudging and smearing your color, your color will lift off of your brush, and you don't want that because then all of this hard work that you just did is going to be pretty well erased. So what you want to do is you want to use a spray sealer. I used Rust-Oleum um, matte clear sealer for this. You want to be using light coats when you do it. Heavy coats will make your um, your inks run as well. So just do light coats. If you're just going to be using the spray sealer, I would suggest two at the minimum. I would you know, probably recommend a third one. However, I like to do a, a coat of quick coat anyway. So what I do is I do two coats of the spray and then one coat of the quick coat. And the reason why I like the quick coat is just because I find that it gives me a very, very solid seal on this. Um, and I am moving on to another step before I epoxy. So I wanted to make sure that this was sealed really, really, really well. So my next step that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding some more veins onto here, but I'm going to be doing it using the metal foil flakes in um, the red variegated color from M and Cat Glitter Factory. So that's these ones here. So it just has like a mixture of different reds and coppers and golds, and it's really, really pretty. And in order to apply that, I'm going to be using Speedball Metal Leaf Adhesive Size. However, you don't need to use this. If you don't have anything like this and you want to use something like Tacket, that will work as well. Any repositionable glue, which is a glue that will dry tacky, will work for this um, part of what I'm going to be doing next. And this is also optional. If you just want to leave it with ink, you can do that too. So I just first need to stir my speedball to make sure that it's mixed. Don't be shaking it. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and just clean off this because like I said, this is going to dry tacky and I don't want that. So I'm just going to use some alcohol just to clean my metal stick. Make sure it doesn't contaminate epoxy when I use that to mix epoxy later. And I'm going to be using a toothpick to apply this onto my tumbler. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of follow my design and I'm kind of going to decide based on my design where I want to add some of the metal flake. So I'm going to just dip my toothpick into the adhesive and I'm just going to start adding where I think a vein would look really nice. So I'm going to put one there and you're not going to be able to see it, but you will be able to find it when you're ready. One there, maybe one here. So I'm just kind of rolling my toothpick. I'm applying it with the side. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to let this dry. It's going to dry uh, sticky or tacky, um, so that's going to allow the foil flake 
to um, adhere to it. So I'm just gonna let this dry for about 15 minutes. I'll come back, I'll kind of check it to see if it's sticky. If I think there's some areas more where like I need it that I kind of identify with right away that I can do that then, or else I might just go back and add some additional after I put these ones on to sort of see how it's going. You can always add more to it later. You can't take it away. So sometimes you might need to do that second pass, um, especially if you've lost your place like I did. So I'm just gonna wait for this to dry and then I will come on and I will show you guys the foil blink. All right, so my adhesive has had a chance to dry, so I am now going to take my foil flakes and I'm going to take a piece of it. And in order to find where your veining goes, I just kind of take my small piece and really just wipe it on until it sticks somewhere. And that is how you find where you did it. So I'm just going to continue going around my cup, picking up pieces of the flake, and rubbing it on to locate those areas. Okay, so I have my foil flakes on certain areas. Um, I've added some veining. However, on the back, I don't really have all that much, just like one small vein here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I am going to go back in with some more of the speedball and kind of add in a few areas where I wanna have some extra foil flakes in here. Again, it's better to add not enough and then go back in and add more because I didn't put a coat of epoxy on, so I can't just remove it if I don't like it. So that's what I'm gonna go do now. Once I've done that, I am going to put a coat of quick coat over top of this. After some experimentation with the metallic foil flakes, it was found that sometimes the quick coat can kind of strip the flakes of their color. So I actually recommend that you first use a spray sealer on top of the foil flakes. And if you want to afterwards, you can then use the quick coat, but that is totally optional. To make sure that my uh, foil isn't repelling any of my epoxy when I go to epoxy. And then I will show you guys my next epoxy step. I'm getting ready to mix up my epoxy for my first coat of epoxy for this tumbler. What I want to do is I want to add a little bit of the eco glitter from M and Cat Glitter Factory. This is the 80 cut. If you remember um, from previous tutorials, if you watch my other tutorials, you'll see me work with this stuff a lot. And I really, really like it. It adds a nice shimmer to your epoxy or to your artwork. Um, in this case, I'm using the finest cut, which is the 80 cut. But I only need a very, very tiny amount. So I just have these little scoopers. They're stool sample scoopers that I got. Um, you can get them on, I think, AliExpress or what have you. And I just add a tiny, tiny little bit. I'm mixing up um, a total of 10 milliliters of epoxy. So that is 5 milliliters of part B and 5 milliliters of part A. Once I have this mixed, I'm going to send you over to my tumbler and you guys can see my next step. So my epoxy is mixed up with the eco glitter, the 80 fine cut eco glitter. So I'm just going to start applying a thin coat of the epoxy onto my tumbler. Now that my epoxy's on, I want to torch it to make sure I'm getting rid of any micro bubbles. Again, I'm using CCDIY, which has the higher heat resistance. So I'm using the propane fuel to um, heat the epoxy because propane does heat higher than butane does. So it allows you to sort of penetrate the epoxy a little bit easier and make sure that you're getting rid of all the mic micro bubbles. So when I'm torching, you want to be cautious not to overheat. So you move really, really quickly. You don't want to burn your epoxy or if you overheat um, your epoxy, what can happen is divots in the epoxy can also form. So we want to avoid that. So what I do is I will just go over it one time really quickly, um, one time around the cup, like I said, so I'm not kind of going over the same epoxy twice. And I'm also co uh, constantly moving my flame and I'm moving quickly. So now that that is on and that is heated and my micro bubbles have been popped, what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a chunky glitter mix. So this is a custom mix that I made. I used um, MLP. I used, hold on, let me look here. I used MLP. I used Paris Pink Chunky Mix, which is this one here from M and Cat Glitter Factory. I used uh, Dorothy's Shoes Chunky Mix from M and Cat Glitter Factory. 
I used, not that one, I used Black Hole Mixed Chunky from Emma Cat Glitter Factory. I used Charmed Chunky Mix from Emma Cat. And I also used a little bit of Antique Gold Chunky Mix from Emma Cat. So I'm going to link all of those in the description as well. And I just put um, kind of equal parts. I don't know. I just sort of mixed it until I kind of liked what I saw and I put it in a dish just to make it easy for me to get in there and to pinch and basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some and I'm just going to pinch it over the tumbler in a few places. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm not looking to overwhelm the tumbler. I just wanted to add a little bit of an accent glitter in here because I really, really love glitter and I just love how it looks on a tumbler. So I wanted to put a little bit on. You can also mix a small amount of a chunky, like, and I mean a very small amount of a chunky in your epoxy and spread it on the tumbler as well, just to sort of get a sporadic sort of look. Um, that's another way that you can add just a little bit to kind of give it um, a bit more visual interest, a bit more depth and dimension, a bit more mediums on there. Um, so that's it. I'm just going to let this spin now. Then once it has been spinning for probably about four or five hours, I'm going to put on a flood coat just so I can kind of get a, a coat of glitter, sorry, a coat of epoxy over top of that glitter. Usually when I make a tumbler, I have a general idea of what I want to have for the design for the decal. In this case, I made one specifically for the style background, which is I hate everyone but you and an anatomical heart. If you want to recreate what I'm doing here, you can find this in my Etsy shop, which is lovely Lulu designs, all one word. And right now I do have it as a featured listing. However, if you are coming to my shop a little bit from now and it's no longer listed as a featured listing, you can find it under Valentine love friends and it will be right there for you. So just to open the file up and show you it's what it looks like in full. This is the full file. It does come with a PNG and an SVG version. A little bit about these two because I do get a lot of questions. SVG is a vectorized file. This allows you to rescale or resize without using any, sorry, without losing any of the um, crispness to your lines. It's not pixelated so you can blow it up to any size you want to and it will continue to be crisp and perfect. PNG, you're going to have your limits um, if you go anywhere above what it's originally designed at. Um, you'll start losing some, some image quality on it. So I do have the SVG PNG. The SVG is what you would use for a cutting machine if you want to do cut layers of vinyl. The PNG is something that you would use more for a print and cut, and that is because it is a flattened image. In all cases, no matter what your uh, file type, you need to have design software that is compatible with them. Um, SVGs are compatible with Cricut Design Space as well as Silhouette Business Edition or higher. PNGs are compatible with both of them, but again, it's going to be a flattened image. So I downloaded both of them just to kind of give you a quick glimpse of what they look like. I'm on a PC, so when I download my images, they go straight to my downloads folder. So I have them here. So I'm just going to upload them to Design Space right now. I go here, I go to my upload upload image, browse. I'm already in my downloads folder. This is the SVG. I will select open and I will select save. And like I said, I'm just going to show you the PNG file as well, just so you can kind of see them. So I'm going to save this as a simple because I don't need to be really removing any backgrounds or any features. It already has a transparent background. I'm going to save it as a print then cut image. And I'll select save. And I will just select both of these and insert the images into my software. So now I'm just going to click off so I, I'm, I don't have both of them selected. You'll notice here that there's this little um, warning sign here. This basically means that it is outside of the bounds of the print and cut, which um, a lot of people don't use print and cut for design space quite simply because it really limits how much you can use on your paper, your cutting mat. Um, will only allow your dimensions to be no higher than 6.75 inches by 9.25 inches. So I'm just going to bring this down for now to say four inches just to kind of show you here. And you'll see that when I have my side panel here, I don't have any options to turn on or off layers or to manipulate things or change any colors. Whereas here I can turn it off if I wanted to, I can turn it back on. 
I could change the color by going up here and changing my color. Um, so there's a lot of different things that I could do. It's a lot more adaptable, but again, you have to have software that is compatible with an SVG. So for now, I'm just gonna get rid of the PNG and sort of move it off to the side there. And what I wanna do is I do have this designed right now where I could cut this all out with vinyl and you absolutely can do that. However, I don't feel like layering my vinyl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here on the side. I'm going to select ungroup and I'm going to select my heart. And I could, if I wanted to, I could duplicate this and leave one black um, piece here so I always could line it up. However, I'm just gonna place it by, by sight. So I'm going to flatten this so it becomes a print then cut, move it off here, and I'm just going to cut my image out like this instead. So that's how I'm going to be turning this in from a cut vinyl piece into um, just a, a sticker that I'm going to do where I'm just going to print all of this and then have the machine cut out around the edges. When I print this, I am going to leave my bleed on, which basically is exactly what it sounds like. It bleeds the colors outside. So it gives a little bit of wiggle room for your cutting machine to make sure that it cuts out perfectly around the edges. I'm not gonna be doing this on transparent paper because um, I'm gonna, I have too dark of a background and I don't wanna see all those veins that we just painted on the tumbler behind it. So I wanna make this with um, a white sticker paper. And I'll link the sticker paper that I used for that as well in the description. I just got it off of amazon.ca um, and it is for laser printers. So that's it. I'm going to send these to my mat and cut them out and I will show you the application process. So my next step is going to be to layer my vinyl. Usually I would layer my vinyl in advance. I use my light board for it. So basically I put my design on my light pad and I kind of layer it on top of there, base it on where the shadows are coming through and then that's how I do it. Um, I might try to show that sometime on video, but it might be really hard because I don't think my camera exposure is going to like the bright light on the table. So I'll see if it will work or not. Um, but this time I couldn't because I did a reverse weed on this design since it does have some more intricate, um, thinner lines in it. It's easier for me to do a reverse weed. So if you're unfamiliar with what a reverse weed is, it is just you take your vinyl that has been cut but not yet weeded you take a piece of transfer tape, you put the transfer tape on, you burnish it, you flip your design over, you remove your backing paper and you weed it off of your tape. And that sort of helps when you're using, uh, sorry, when you're doing um, smaller fine cuts and, and that type of thing. So that's what I did with this one here. And I did lightly sand my tumbler. I washed it with Dawn dish soap and I also wiped it down with um, rubbing alcohol just to make sure that there was no oils or anything on here that might um, make it so that my vinyl doesn't really attach as well. And I cut my backing paper in half. Um, if you've seen me do this before, then you know I do that to help with placement. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of put it on a part of the tumbler that I like, and I'm going to put it on its side like so. And I'm going to take my trusty measuring tape and I'm going to measure two points on my design and make sure that it lines up about the same on each side. And it does. So then I can just lift half of my design, remove that part of the backing tape, sorry, backing paper, and working from the center, I'm just going to push outwards. And I'm going to do the same with the other side, starting from the center and working my way out. And because, again, I've got a lot of fine lines on here, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I burnish it really, really well. And then when I think it's ready, I will start peeling back my transfer tape. Go slowly to make sure that everything is staying down, that nothing is lifting. So 
So since I'm going to be layering my tumbler on top, like, sorry, I'm going to be layering my vinyl on my tumbler. What I need to do is I want to make it so that I can still see this here. In some cases, I would just pull this off and try to lay it down. But because this is such a large um, part of the design, it's the frame part. One, I really want to make sure it lines up properly. Two, I'm worried that if I don't have my my transfer tape stretched out exactly to the dimensions of the bottom layer what will happen is I'll get puckering that does happen so I want to make sure that I've got it on a backing paper but this backing paper is really hard to see through I can only see a tiny amount so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lay down some parchment paper underneath my design first and then I'm going to layer it using the parchment paper technique The reason why I cut my parchment paper in half is for the same reason why I always do. It just makes it easier for me when I layer it because I do half my design at a time when I'm pressing it down. So now I see that it is layered quite nicely. Just placing the design on top, checking to see how it's lining up. And only when I'm happy with where it's lining up on all sides, will I start laying it down. So this is pretty good. So I'm gonna just lift this up here and I'm going to start here. And just press that down. And then I can come on the other side, lift this off, and do the same thing, making sure that I'm pressing it down and I'm not allowing any bubbling. There is a slight taper on this tumbler, which does make it a little bit harder. If this was a perfectly straight tumbler, this would have been easy. There we go. So now I'll just pull off my transfer tape. And I have that and now all I have to do is add my heart sticker because I, I did this in white I could very easily have just kept the the, the heart here um, with the white background like I could have duplicated it and just had that that outline or like the solid background of the heart and then laid water slide over it However, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it in black or white until I kind of came down to my vinyls. So I just left the sticker the way I had it. I'm just going to kind of line that up to the center of the bottom. And push it off like that. So there we have the decal is on. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to seal my sticker first with some quick coat. Um, so I'll probably end up sealing the entire design first and then I will add some epoxy and then it will be ready to go as, as I will, sorry, I will epoxy until smooth and then it will be ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. If you like learning about how to create different watercolor effects using alcohol inks, I recommend you checking out the watercolor marble tumbler tutorial by Angeline Knott of Forget Me Not Designs. It is her first tutorial, but she has a ton of natural talent and is very gifted with inks, so it's definitely worth a watch. I will link her video in the description section below. Also, if you liked this video, please support me by giving it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click my logo to subscribe and tickle that little notification bell so you'll be notified of future videos I post. Thanks again for watching and I'll be back for more Tumblr tips and tutorials.